Hello again, everybody. Sebastian here with another Watcher of Realms video. Hey, in this one, I'm going to be discussing Sins of Five at GBG. We've had a chance now to go a couple of rounds to try to learn what is working, what is not. And I'm also going to kind of give you ideas of defenses that you can deploy and where not to put units. That is going to be the key, big key of this strategy guide. And I'm also going to give you kind of uh, tidbits of if you see those type of formations, the known formations, how to take advantage of them. In addition to this strategy guide, I, I am going to suggest that you tune in to Wars Going On, our latest episode with Slate Gaming, as you can see down here. Right here is a screenshot of it. I will post a link of that video in the, in the description of this video. So you can go and look at it because Arturo, Slate, and I do really get into the weeds of trying to figure out exactly how to protect this map, especially when the Gauntlet tournament opens up and every guild is going to try to compete for the best possible spot to get into that tournament. Okay, so as I start showing you a series of clips here of some of the battles that I have been encountering, and I'm also going to highlight some some of the strengths of some compositions along with some of the weaknesses. So if you can see here, one of the things that I already noticed is that we have a Valderon here on top, so he is he is going to you know do any damage, especially to anything that builds up here. But what I'm hoping to do is that we have enough time to possibly even swarm it or go after Brokur. But you can see the weakness here, down here. Hex is going to provide control just, just as we are spawning off. But he will lose range. So eventually I'm only going to have to deal with Valderon. And I'm only going to have to deal with Eobar. Now the other thing too is Eobar here, because he's a single target hitter, we can kind of somehow take advantage of this. So when you're seeing this and you think you have the BP check on it, try to get the ultimates out of the way, which is exactly what I'm doing here. And I'm also kind of getting a sense of how hard Valderon is hitting. Now, because it is Valderon, I do not expect him to go down easily because he does take a couple of hits to bring him down. But one of the weaknesses of this spot is that if you don't have enough control in the front to deal with the lightning guards and they get an advantage in trying to pass you, so you can see Hex here and Eobar are going to have a hard time with them, that they in that turn will indeed target the fighter that is in this slot so if valorant does not come down it's fine but the key here is for my lightning guards if i do think they're strong enough to get past these two he will just clean the backside if they manage to get through even if just once uh, is able to get through so as you can see here hollow did not have enough coverage to deal with uh for iobar now that i clean the backside all I know that I have to deal with is Valderon, and is just trying to time that if I can. Now, if you want to, you can try to build um, build units up and then swarm it and try to get by. You only needed one specifically there. Now, I am hiding identifiers because uh, some of these players did not ask to be in the video, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and shut those off. But in, in some of these, I will tell you that it's it's a matter of whether i thought i had the bp checked some of these defenses here that i'm encountering are like 430 450 bp i can get my units up to 500 you know 520 there are some in some battles here that i will show you kind of the bp range but overall i just wanted to kind of give you my thought process on how things are playing out especially in the positioning of the units now here there this this opponent here it's thinking that dahlia and Ingr or somebody like kringer would do well enough in this but i'm going to show you here because there's enough there is there's enough control here with hex and heroines once we get past the flowers and we get past dallas's range she becomes obsolete so we're i don't think that if you see a dahlia defense uh unless you you know that you're not going to bp check it it's not going to intimidate you. It definitely is not intimidating us here in this map. So here is the thing that I'm doing. I'm going to try to get ultimates out of the way. That's what you saw me doing here. And I'm going to release the lining guards. All right. The key here again 
is all about trying to get through this whole hog mess here with arrogance and hex right now here's the thing because he places hex down here and you cannot you can you cannot really put him up here and i'm going to show you why in some instances you cannot put in a fighter here but the fact now that he's not his ultimate is not activated he's in a cooldown he loses that range so right now the only unit that has to contend with the flyers is hex that's it so you can take advantage of that and then if you have strong enough lining guards you can take out everything on the back side again so you just have to make sure that a you have more control if you're going to be placing down here or you can put a very strong markman unit up here to try to counter anything that is flying through and i'm going to show you one specific here in another battle that people are preferring to place up here all right so that's that battle uh i'm just gonna play out the rest it's because some of some of you like to see how things play out but this here is just all about swarming going after broker get him out of the way so that's how this battle in particular went now here's the next one uh in terms of positioning okay so yeah i wanted to make sure that this is something that i wanted to clarify as well the the thing that you're going to see here is that he placed siders one tile back right so now the marksman which in this in this in this example here is going to be hex i'm gonna tell you now he is vulnerable how is he vulnerable well the one thing that i decided to do i'm gonna use my bookkeepers so i'm gonna send them out and if they're strong enough you're gonna see what happens here to hex because he you put him one tile down so there hex is now gone i haven't eliminated one of the win conditions he is out the other unfortunate part here is placing the fighter here if you want to if you think you have enough coverage or enough dps with the three units here or enough control to slow things down you can probably waste the slot here but in this situation here abomination is doing nothing and even if i'm on a swarm my 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 whole tactic here right now is try to get cyrus out of the way that's it he is alone there is no back he really does not have backup even with sulcadence here in the back so that's what i did just get him out of the way but the key that allowed this to begin with and to soften this up is because i was able to take hex just right there so that's another situation that I can tell you. Do not place your tank too far down. And if you do, you lose that platform here. Same situation is going on with the fighters. So you know, remember how I was telling you that if you put a fighter here, he's going to be susceptible. He is, especially uh, to the destructors. Because if you can get him to get right in front of the tank and they, they, they do their damage, they're going to take that fighter out same thing in this in this style here but in this situation here is the same thing now i know our dia is going to you know be going towards the front here aracha here is facing east she's not going to do anything so here again bookkeepers again boom fighter is out all right sometimes the one unit that is able to survive a couple hits from the bookkeepers because of his passive is valderan uh, but it has to be a very strong Valorant. And so in this situation, it was all just now taking advantage because Silas is, is on cooldown. He does not have his ult active and just get rid of the tank. That's exactly what happened there. I was able to take one of the win conditions out right away. Okay. In this head up here, there is something that I'm already seeing as being deficient. And that here is that there is no CC, right? We have possibly uh, a very, uh, very well built Ajax. Here's a uh, Elowin. She's just sitting in the back. And then we have a tank here that is not Procur. Here is a Racha. And I know that we have a very, uh, uh, a marksman that is not going to be, you know, doing a very fast basic. So this is a strategy that works if you think you have the BP and if you have strong enough spiders. I mean, level four level five spider or not no, excuse me level five bombs level five six seven and above spiders so don't blink because i released the spiders and the bomb and the and the bombers right away and that's it 
if you don't play CC in front, if you don't have a way to protect your units, this is going to be one strategy you're going to be seeing a lot. Just the bombs taking everything out right in the front. If, if you don't protect that side well enough. And then, of course, if you are in in uh in my guild here in the forerunner so it would be in in the global server we would tell you don't use cetrum cetrum um even though he can he deals physical uh, a lot of physical damage he has that long cooldown after his ult and then his basic is not doing enough so we're also going to take advantage of that so if you see cetrum take advantage of that as well but as you saw here because there wasn't enough control at the beginning there wasn't enough damage done to the spiders the bombers could take advantage of the situation and they took care of uh, everything around them. Okay, here is another one. Here is another one where it's bad placement. So don't try not to do this. So here we have the tank. And then we, I already told you what happens to the fighters that are placed in this tile here, especially if you can take them out with your pre creepers. Here is Silas again uh, in this tile here. And I can't remember if my bookkeepers take him out, but we'll 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 watch during the clip. But here, Mary is already susceptible. She's going to be a target, and because you, we allow, we give the bookkeepers a target. We also then put Aracha in a vulnerable position. So if you have your, if you place your tank here, do not I'm telling you this platform right here. Exit up. It's not available to you anymore. Another, I don't think that I'm going to show a fight here in terms of uh, a, a fight with um, a, a unit here, a, a platform unit up here. I will tell you, though, that if we, if we do see a platform unit here and then there isn't enough CC or backup from the other DPS units here, one way that we take any platform units here out is a, if we can bomb it, or B, use the Scourges, and if they survive long enough, they'll do enough damage here, especially if there's no coverage by the healer, and they'll take that out. So, as you can see, most of the fights here, here in Fortnite, people have been seeing that, so there is very few defenses now where we're seeing no uh, uh, units being placed in this platform for that reason, because they're really susceptible to the Scourges and the bombs. But in this situation here, again, it's all about, uh, you know, trying to get Silas's ultimate out of the way. Now you're going to see here what happens to Mary. And now that Mary is being hit, we also give the bookkeepers an opportunity to take Arach out. And here's the other thing, the other consequence of putting a unit so close to your tank here. Silas is out of the way. Boom. That cluster there is just too easy to pick apart. So do not do that, especially if you're going to place a defense like this. And if you see somebody clustering units like this and you think you have enough strong, strong enough bookkeepers, get them out of the way. That's exactly how you're going to play this. Okay, so now here's another fight that I collected. You kind of see the BP there. Uh, okay, so in this one, uh, this one is a, is a, is a Titus one. So... Um, you know, some people like to use Titus because he can, he has a like a revive, and then he can if his ultimate activates. But the reason that I that I kind of picked on this defense as well is because there is a Nyx up here. Nyx is becoming very popular in this map, especially being put in this spot. And an A3, A5 Nyx is going to be very dangerous here, and it's going to provide uh, opportunities for you to to counter a lot of things. But in this situation here, unfortunately, there is not enough CC here by Dahlia for Nyx to be effective. And we can kind of get around the CC by, um, by Aracha here. Now, I'm just going to send my crawlers here uh, to deal with the tank just to get one of, those, the, the rev one of the revives out if I can. And I'm also going to activate Silas as well. Now, here's the thing with Titus. If you don't build them well enough and you have very strong crawlers, you might be able to take them out in the second round. Okay, now here's the thing. Uh, you gotta make sure your Nyx is built well enough to do damage, but she is the only one doing the damage to my Lightning Guard, so I'm not too worried about that. There isn't enough control here. So the thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm also gonna place one of the healers. My objective here with the Lightning Guards is to make sure that they survive long enough for them to get one shot on Aracha and hopefully have enough time to get out Nyx out of the way.
So here we go. You can see it kind of getting into danger zone, but they did what I needed them to do, especially with the tank not being there. And they kind of cleared the path for me. So it's all done. And that's how we completed this. So again, yes, Nyx is going to be a powerful unit in this style, but you need to give her the backup down here. Dahlia is not going to do it. All right. All right. So I have a couple more just to kind of give you an Okay. So this is another one uh, that I'm going to tell you, no, don't do this. If you see this, it's very susceptible, especially if you put the tank back here, because what's going to happen the bookkeeper is going to aim the tank, splash damage, it's going to take everybody out. I think that in this situation here, he was hoping that he thought he had enough CC to lock out any bookkeepers coming his way. But as you can see here, at least on mine, I was there were I, I managed to affiliate him high enough for them to take aim and get rid of them. So here. There is one hit right there. We almost took Hex out. Now there's a little bit of CC going on. And maybe one more hit here. And one more. They're right there. Perfect. So they were able to get one more shot out. And because it was a straight line, not only did they took out Hex, they took out Aracha. Now it's just a clean map. You can go right through it. No problem. All right. Does not matter what tank is in there. Uh, Dahlia is not going to do anything to you. So that's exactly how we then clean that out. Okay, so I think that that was the last one there that I'm going to show you for this particular round. And uh, like I said, uh, there are many, many different ways to build a defense in this, in this map. It's going to favor the platform units. So if you want to put units down here you can do that there's no problem with that it's just, you just have to make sure that the units that are a going to do a lot of damage or are going to provide you a lot of control if you are going to insist on putting a fighter down here again make sure that you have enough protection for him because a if you don't cover that fighter with uh with enough uh dps down here lightning guards can take it out bombs can take it out or scourges can take it out that's going to be another thing. This platform is going to be very powerful for, for some people. I have seen a lot of uh, defenses where Maul and Nyx are coming up here. Of course, again, you can counter that. And it, again, it all depends on the support unit around that placement here as well. So just make sure that that is um, something that you're also keeping an eye on, especially if you're building a defense. When it comes to trying to build a defense down here, just make sure that you have the ability to do CC. And there were a couple of spots here that where I have told you they may be prone to bookkeepers and don't give them uh, the opportunity for the bookkeepers just to mess things up for you. All right. There is one particular defense that I'm running right now where I have a DPS unit in this platform, a DPS unit here on this platform, my healer on the back, and I'm running two tanks. And so far, I have found that that is resistant enough to bookkeepers right now. The only thing that I have to do and make sure is that I make it as hard as I can for them to swarm me. And so there's a couple of CC units that I'm teaming up with that particular uh, setup there. So that is kind of the overview that I can give you that is going on right now with this map and how compositions are being formed. I do think that then as we start getting into the higher overlord ranks, we're going to start seeing metas being established. But right now, I can tell you right now that once people are getting the Garnet Guard, which is the season five demon shoulder that is being introduced this season, it's going to change this all over again, okay? Because this platform here, is getting targeted first thing that you spawn them off. So you have to make sure that you provide them enough protection. They're a little bit squishy, but you have to make sure that you give enough protection if you're gonna place a unit down here. And then again, if you place a unit down, up down here or one in this style here with the tank down, they're gonna get targeted because the targeted region of the Garden Guard is going to be as soon as a platform gets in their range, 
it doesn't matter where the tank is that is exactly where we're going to be throwing the rock and they do a lot of damage but they are squishy so that's kind of the way that you're going to be able to counter that okay if you have any more questions comments before this thing comes out in global please post them in the comment section below i will sure probably do more uh, season 5 gbg videos once we are able to figure out how to counter the gunner guard and then we'll talk more in the future regarding how to really try to defend this map but as of right now i'm telling you it's going to be difficult to defend it uh unless you really have the roster with uh heavily awakened heroes thank you all very much for tuning in and watching i will see you all in the next watch over rooms video and do please hit like and subscribe on your way out Take.